The fantasy football playoffs are approaching. We've got an important waiver wire show today. We're breaking down all of your top pickups, some players that can give you starts to get you into the playoffs and help you win that championship. Make sure you click subscribe right here. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Here we go. Where are we going? I, well, hopefully I'm very to, interested. Hopefully to the playoffs. Ah, uh, yes. we, are, we are a week away from the Fantasy Football Playoffs. We survived a very eventful Monday night football game. There were many matchups that I think uh, in, in several of our leagues that we thought were over. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Jamar Chase happened and Travis Etienne happened and Evan Ingram happened and uh, Joe Mixon happened and we got ourselves a football game. And this is very much the Jake Browning I thought that Zach Taylor would unleash last week dude it was so weird the way the game starts it's like you know terrible runs and then all the and i think there was three catches to jamar chase each for a yard each and it each was for each it was oh mm -hmm. good lord here we go you're in for it <laughs> this is gonna be an awful game and then they looked at the results from that and went hmm, let's we should play regular, <laughs> regular Bengals football. They did, and they scored a we bunch of points. Throw the ball downfield sometimes. <laughs> That's what they did when Browning took over in the injury game, which gave me confidence in Jake Browning because I think Zach Taylor is a, a smart coach, and he knows. You know, there were certain situations, even in this game, where it was like third and two was the bomb to Jamar Chase because it was single coverage, and he let him take the shot downfield, like. This whole, like, I turtle up because it's my backup quarterback is almost – you have to thread the needle so much with your defense, mm -hmm. and you have to have such perfect drives. Here's Jake Browning's numbers from last night, 32 for 37. Very nice. 354 and 1, and I'm not going to dismiss the value of T. Higgins on the field for, for Jamar Chase, just the fact that there was another wide receiver out there. Um, you know, the worst play of the game was Tyler Boyd. <laughs> Yeah, so the for, pass attempt for all the praising we're giving uh, the Bengals coaching staff to go those to the Jamar Chase throw trick throw and then the Tyler Boyd trick throw. Why? Well, Why? I mean, uh, at some point, it's got to be Tyler Boyd's fault. You can't throw it directly to the yes. defender, but no, and it was you, Jamar Chase's fault too. Of you have to recognize, I should not throw the ball back to the quarterback. This is look at what's going on. This is not a good idea. So we, we had a football game. We had 65 points on the board. Uh, we had an injury to Trevor Lawrence, an yeah. ankle injury that, that, that took him off the field. Um, he's still walking <laughs> to the oh, he's locker he's, room. He's still yeah. walking. Like he's almost there. Jason was making the point that maybe they should have given their <laughs> franchise quarterback a cart. I because mean, they showed him like five minutes after he started leaving, still walking to like – Inch by he, inch with a coach on each arm. Like, dude, just yeah. <laughs> pick him up. Just drive him to the locker room. What are you doing? What if he waved off the cart? He's, like, it's like, Mac, possible. like Mac Jones would It's have. possible. And then you could see the regret. <laughs> yeah. So we have. Oh, a, that, that locker room's yeah. further than I thought. We have a waiver show today. We have waiver rankings on the site, thefantasyfootballers.com. They were being updated all throughout yesterday and today. Um, including a couple new names this morning. It'll go live today. There was a point in the game with with the Christian Kirk groin injury. Yeah, now, that was the one huge disappointment like for fantasy. Like, you know, Trevor Lawrence had done a lot by the time he was injured. Christian Kirk had a catch, and he went out with the groin injury. I believe it was the, was it the first catch it of the was, game. It was, yeah, one for yeah. 26, and then ouch, and out. But there was a point there where, like, Zay Jones jumped to the tippy top of yeah, my absolutely. waiver pickups. And because Zay Jones had a good game in and of himself last night, and then 
Trevor Lawrence goes down. And then he trickles yeah. down my waivers a little bit. And now we're getting news this morning. We'll keep you up to date. Trevor Lawrence's injury, it's an ankle sprain. Um, he was rolled up last year, I believe, came back fairly quickly. But next week might be ambitious. So the Zay Jones signing, you know, we'll talk about it on today's episode. I did want to give a a quick shout out to uh we're not affiliated with this website at all. What are we doing here? Um but it's great for for this week heading into the playoffs. The fantasyfootballers.com? Uh, oh, it's one of my that's it's my a favorite good website. But no, th- if you go to theffhub.com, oh yeah, yeah. You can actually what they've done and I I don't know who even runs it over there, but what they've done is they let you import your league and they will give you the basically the playoff odds and the situation for your league. So if you have teams fighting for playoff spots, um, you can go ahead and not only, you know, see the percentage odds of those teams making the playoffs, but they have a tool on there where they show the upcoming matchups for the week and you can choose who wins each game and then it will tell you the outcome. Uh, And you can even choose like tiebreaker situations. You can see uh, your all play record against everybody in the league had you been in an all-play league you can see uh if you were given jason jason's schedule was given to me what would my record have been it's just kind of a fun uh a fun tool it doesn't work on every league so and and we don't run it so if something's broken don't come to me it's i've already seen the tweets it's the perfect place to go if you've been knocked out of the playoffs (laughs) if you want to get real angry because you will see what your record would have been with a different schedule yeah you can ignore that tap (laughs) No, you can't. But like, <laughs> let me let me give you an example here. You're like, looking right in the eye of Mora. If you if you look at our league of record, which we've got one week left, you will find that Jason Moore has a thirty one point zero one percent chance of making the final playoff spot. No, oh, it's not that bad. It's, it's not a, that good. No, <laughs> it's not that good. But it's, it could be worse. I mean, that's like, um, I mean, it's not a coin flip, but it's a thirty one percent chance. Yeah. So there's a 31% chance you ha- are happy this weekend, I think. Although but yesterday, that also you, means yesterday there's a very said, not nice percent chance that I am sad. <laughs> That's true. And apparently Mike has a 0.55% chance of making the playoff. Oh, <laughs> all right. I'm, it's just a flesh yeah. wound. So uh, you can check that out. That's uh, the FFHub.com, <clears throat> and uh, it works really well. Another disappointing player from last night's game. It wasn't uh, just the Christian Kirk letdown, but Calvin Ridley had yes. the exact same amount of yards as Christian Kirk on eight targets and on an entire game. Um, now, does he only work with a three? All three <laughs> yeah. guys available. If you don't have three, he can't thrive. It, I mean, it's crazy. But you're right. Yeah, Calvin Ridley was a huge disappointment. I and Dearness Johnson didn't get any work. Uh, it was all Travis Etienne. Yeah, his chest was okay. Etienne's chest? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, T. Higgins, it wasn't a good game in his first game back. Yeah, that would have that would have taken some real courage to play him. Wide open for a touchdown that Jake Browning just – he forced forced it to chase. Browning did look pretty good, though. I, yeah, I think he, he did. You know, I, I don't want to, um, you know, over – estimate his ability based on that performance but he looked very good he looked capable and they're playing the Indianapolis Colts so if you happen to have lost someone or you're in a real real pickle and you're and no one's on the waiver like we we're in you know a a league where uh we don't have Kyler our backup was Derek Carr you know you're looking at a waiver situation where maybe everyone is gone Browning might be there and I don't know he could get it done against the Colts All right, let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, I, you know, the power of the snow. Derrick Henry not in concussion protocol. On track to play in week 14 against the Dolphins. Yeah, you ever tried to concuss a Yeti? Yeah. You know know who's in concussion protocol? That field. (laughs) The field is in concussion protocol. Thank you, Mike. Um, Matt LaFleur, the team is not sure of the severity of Christian Watson's hamstring injury. I'm pretty sure (laughs) of uh, the fact that I don't think we see him play football during a fantasy-relevant period of time. Yeah, unfortunately, I think you're correct. 
Puka Nakua dealing with a sprained AC joint. Uh, that, that stems from the moment in the game in which Sean McVay thought he was dead. His words, not ours. That was his words. And then Puka also said, I wasn't breathing. And my shoulder felt like it was wrong. But I'm good. So Puka, I, I mean, he's a tough dude. He's going to play. You know how, how many plays he left? Like, he, he had a monster game this last week. But, I mean, there was a bomb that he kind of dropped difficult. There was a huge run. I think it was like a 50-plus yard run that was called back on a holding. It, he could have had an even bigger game. He's very good at football. He does land more violently and run more violently to me um, in the Mike Williams universe a little bit. I mean, he's just a all-in type of player, and he has been banged up a lot. Derek Carr in concussion protocol again. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, second time in a month to go into concussion protocol means there, like, there's just no way that he's going to clear – this week, you have to be prepared for Jameis Winston and the ramifications of that. And Tank Dell. Yeah. And this this is unfortunate because obviously the injury is more severe than than the you know fractured fibula situation yesterday. It's being reported that he underwent season-ending surgery on his ankle. So, in fact, surgery was required at all for this injury tells you it's more severe than yeah, it's a bummer. I, I had hoped. And I guess we'll talk about this. Robert Sala, uh, not ready to announce a Week 14 starter. Mike, why don't you catch us up so, on, on Days of Our Lives? If you were on Twitter yesterday for – it was like the morning, early afternoon. It was fantastic. The drama, the tea was being spilled. Uh, we got a report that the Jets are wanting Zach Wilson to – be the starter again, but he's not sure that he wants to do it, which is the most insane thing to leak out. Like, how dare anyone in that building put that out in to get reported for whatever reason for leverage? And then it was reported, no, actually there are people who are familiar with Zach Wilson's thinking that he would be willing to go back and play. Then there was a report that Rodgers talked to him but when Wilson expressed his injury concerns because like, Zach Wilson has to think about the future of his career because it's not with the Jets. The future, and and oh. then it was, no, Salah actually talked to Zach Wilson and Wilson's good to play. It was The, the drama was fantastic. I At this point, I think we see Zach Wilson starting for the Jets this weekend. I can't imagine a scenario where it's better for Zach Wilson not to play as the starting quarterback. Well, getting hurt. But that might be good. <laughs> not Sorry. for not for getting a job next year. No, I, I'm joking, but it's like, you know, you, you, you have limited shots to be the starter. If you go out and make some plays, you know, the fact the team's just ready to go back to him, what a mess in New York. Yeah. We're not going to see Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to say it again. We're not going – because they are not a good enough team. They're just not. They're not going to make the playoffs. No, the offense is a disaster. Is Zach Wilson coming back good for Garrett Wilson? It's, sure. It's yeah, maybe slightly positive. I mean, is this – It's not negative. Is this the play <laughs> to, to like, show gl the glass half full Zach Wilson? Like, if hey, you're, guys, he's, look, he's, he's our to, best to, option. To trade him? To me, it's like you're driving a car – and three out of the four tires are flat. And he comes back and two of them are flat. I mean, it's like, it's you're not driving this thing any direction that you want to drive it. You're not driving it fast. And Garrett Wilson will catch one more pass. I mean, it's the Texans, right, this week? Uh, is that what? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Cool. <laughs> There's your spot starter, guys, for your uh, Champ 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 League. Zach Wilson, is he out there? I doubt it. He is not. I guess it's you're a dynasty. dynasty. Yeah. That was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Uh, before we jump into the waiver wire, it's a good time to remind you about jointhefoot.com. That's where you can find uh, a ton of exclusive tools and resources, including the consistency charts and the strength of schedule tool, which uh, and the stream finder tool, which are going to be very important for identifying the spot starts. There have been a lot of injuries. We made it through in Scotty Fish. 
Yeah. And uh, suddenly Zeke and um, you know looks like a viable player. Romeo Dobbs. There are going to be players with opportunities due to injury. Noah Brown's another one that mm -hmm. um, you know for the Texans with Tank Dell going out. And we're going to talk about all those guys right now. Put me in, coach. All right, we're going to try to get dirty here. Nasty, Mike, with some of these waiver wire pickups. All the rankings on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. If you hear us talk about players that are not available in your league, like there are more players than what we talk about here on this episode listed on the website. In the heavily rostered category, the three big players that jump out, maybe two at this point, Ezekiel Elliott, he's going to have the opportunity with Ramondre expected to miss a few weeks. The The roster percentage numbers that we have from Yahoo, it says 46%. So if for some reason he was there, let, let me put it this way. I'd spend all the fab I have on Zeke if he was out there. Sure. Every, every bit that I have for the chance to have a starter for three weeks, four weeks, maybe more. Even when Ramondre comes back, Jason talked about it yesterday with the high ankle sprain, generally limited. Do you guys disagree with that? Yeah, I mean, running backs are hard to come by. So if there's one that you know is a full-time starter, you, and at this point in the season, you don't, you don't have any advantage to saving fab. So I don't disagree at all. If you need a running back, um, even if you don't necessarily need a running back, but you've got a roster spot. Other people are in need of running backs that they could help other teams. You certainly need to be trying to pick up Zeke in every league. He's he's you know available in about half of leagues. Still a rostered player, but um, check every league you're in. And then the one to pay attention to in case he was to be dropped during waiver day, Keaton Mitchell, heavily rostered. Probably all competitive leagues have him on a roster, but. Uh, oh no! Wait, he's coming. He's coming off the bye. Yeah. So yeah. sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, I, he's not going to be dropped coming off the bye. But pay attention to Keaton Mitchell's opportunity. Tajay Spears was somebody we were going to discuss. Uh, probably needs to still be added if he was yes. out there. But again, probably roster. Yeah, we, we don't. I mean, maybe nothing is wrong with Derrick Henry. Maybe something pops up. Uh, we, we won't know. You know, until we get some practice reports coming out. So I think that Tajay Spears is is still a priority add. Be, like it, it's the same as Zeke. Like, what else would the team do? Like, I'm looking at the Patriots. What do you mean it's the same as Zeke? As in the the opportunity. Like, if if Henry misses, Tajay what? Tajay Spears plays so much football. I know, but he's not going to miss. I'm saying. So I, how would they be the same if Derrick Henry misses? Okay, I guess I. I I'm saying that seems like a weird thing to distinguish when we know that Ramondre's out, but we don't. But right. we expect him to play I'm, uh, I'm saying should the should the situation arise where Derrick Henry misses this isn't a Tajay Spears joins a committee Tajay Spears will be a three down player players that can make a difference that are more available you know Mike this morning you brought up DJ Dallas we have a situation in Seattle it's a tough matchup against San Francisco but Kenneth Walker's been out for two consecutive weeks and Zach Charbonnet was injured at the end of the game uh, it was reported to be a, a, a knee bruise, but DJ Dallas is somebody that you might be able to sneak under your roster for nothing. Yeah, the, the expectation I think right now is that Charbonnet will be able to start and play this week, but because it happened at the end of the game and Walker is still injured, that could be a, a complete you know <laughs> free pass uh, at a running back because I don't think many people are, are bidding on DJ Dallas. And he is available in checking my math all of the leagues <laughs> yeah not rostered anywhere uh Roshan Johnson and Ty Chandler are both low roster percentages they're both coming off of a bye week and so they were probably dropped in your league or in a lot of leagues Ty Chandler we saw get heavily involved Mike you've mentioned him and then yep. Ro Roshan like if you're the Chicago Bears you are the most advantaged by giving Roshan more opportunities to see what he is to equip you going into next year's draft because Deontay Foreman is not your future. It doesn't seem like the team wants Khalil Herbert to be your future. When you're talking about a spot start, it's Detroit, who has softened against the run, I think, over the last six weeks. What do you think of those two guys, and which would you pick? 
Oh, that it, it's really tough. I, you know, we don't know whether Deonta Foreman is going to be back and healthy. Uh, there was a blowout last time when we saw Roshan more involved ahead of Khalil Herbert. So was that just resting the starter because it was a blowout? I think I'm going to go with Ty Chandler. Um, I, I think the matchup against the Raiders is a better one on the ground. You can run on them very easily. Uh, they've they've toughened up as well, but that's where they are weakest. And he has that top end speed where you could have limited work and a huge breakaway run. Whereas I feel like with Roshan, he he's looked very good, but he needs the volume. Like if he's going to be relevant for fantasy, he's going to need 15, 16, 17 touches. I'm I'm not confident he gets that. Whereas if both of these guys get six or seven touches in this upcoming week, I would much rather play Ty Chandler with his speed in the matchup over over uh, Roshan. Mike, talk to me about the running back situation for a team going on by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Washington Commanders, we had the hamstring injury to Brian Robinson. He was going on by anyways. Gibson had what looks to be, what, uh, 14 opportunities in the last game, but is he worthy of a roster spot on a week when he's not going to be available? At this point, if you're not fighting people for Zeke, you know, Keaton Mitchell, you'd, and I, I would put Ty Chandler above him as well because if you need a player this week. But Gibson comes through. Like He had five targets this past week, four the week before that, six, five, five. So he's being heavily utilized. I mean, we're – we're wondering where, what, like, where are these targets for uh, Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson? And it's well, some of them are going to to Antonio Gibson. This was the highest or second highest snap percentage we've seen him play uh, of the season. It's the bye week, but going with that, it was a hamstring injury, and I don't remember the exact timeline, but it feels like Robinson was ruled out pretty quick. And like we didn't, you didn't even get the the kind of hope. Well, he's questionable. It, I think he was ruled out pretty quick. So, and Gibson would be kind of like in the in the secondary ads if I don't need a player right now. But I I do not want my opponent getting Antonio Gibson, who gets after the bye week, gets to play the Rams and the Jets. Like that's those are both going to be plus matchups for him. And Chris Rodriguez Jr. That was yes. the name I was just going to bring up. You, you so need... often you have a player come in and play the role of the player that's absent. Mm -hmm. And Rodriguez had seven carries, and he's been over for a carry in all three of his uh, – in every game. He's, he's The games where he's had carries, 5.8, 4.4, 7.2, 5.2. He's a B4.1. Yeah, he's, he's looked he really, really good. Here, and, I, and he's available in all the leagues. So if you don't need someone right now this week, because obviously they're on by – Gibson is probably not available in your league. I agree with Mike. You need to make sure you check and 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 keep him away from opponents. But Chris Rodriguez, the week he's gonna he's gonna probably be picked up this waiver cycle, so you won't be able to get him next week more than likely. And there is a strong possibility that he's a pretty good play next week. Any chance that the Green Bay Packers and we're, we're in these you know not rostered player category, Patrick Taylor? Any interest in Patrick Taylor as a cursory ad? Uh, in the event that they're tired of uh, AJ Dillon, <laughs> Dill Dillon played pretty well this past week. He he would be uh, he's an insurance back, and Patrick. I, I mean, there's a chance that Aaron Jones is back. Yeah, Aaron Jones didn't so, play. Aaron Jones already didn't play, and he got two carries. So I'm I'm not interested in Patrick Taylor. All right, this is where you get surprised though. Uh, running back drop candidates. Apparently, people ready to instantaneously turn on Devin Singletary. <laughs> uh, no. Is he a drop candidate to you? No, he's he's not a drop candidate for me. I mean, there there are push comes to shove situations, right? Like Zeke is out there. Well, Zeke would probably be better for your roster right now than than Singletary would be. There's probably someone else better. Push to drop. comes to shove. Brees Hall or Zeke? Brees Hall. Zach Wilson's gonna save the day. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got that out with a straight face. Uh I I would voice I have concerns for Singletary. Not I don't know if I want to drop him because of what he can become, and it's a plus matchup with the Jets. But he plummeted back back down to forty six percent of the snaps, nine opportunities. I mean that was that's the pre injury usage that Devin Singletary was seeing, which 
at the beginning of the year was use for Pierce. Uh, I can look. I believe that up. Pierce. Had, it sucks. Let me just and say this. Line. Let me just say this. It sucks. Yeah, fifteen. That situation 15 carries. sucks. I have both guys. Oh, good. I've luck. got both guys in multiple leagues. Oh man. I loved. Sorry it. for your loss. I loved it when they had one guy. If one guy was there, yes, it's awesome. Not to mention, I mean, with Tank Dell's absence, like the targets were there for Singletary when he was the guy. You know what they should really? I want NFL head coaches to start having a committee situation to keep their backs fresh, but they cycle it like game by Every game other by game. game starters. Ah. Yeah, now you got a workhorse oh. back so that the defense doesn't know is this a passing down back. Or, first second now that's what i'm talking about every running back gets a bye week every other week then you roster both and it's a fantasy oh, those, i mean those come on head be, coaches they'd be so fresh oh head coaches get it together they'd be fresh i'd be fresh it would be great yeah and I, then i do when have one a league where I, get injured it's still a full time. i do have a league where i'm gonna play both play play oh. both at the same time you're yeah. already conceding um <laughs> yeah i have to oh i'm sorry I have to. <laughs> he says through tears. <laughs> All right, quick break. We'll be back with some whiteouts. All righty. Wide receiver ads. Um, we've got the upper echelon. If you're in a competitive league, they're probably not going to be sitting out there, but we're going to throw their names out there so you check them first. Starting with Jaden Reed and Romeo Dobbs, they're both going to have a consolidation of targets that hopefully benefits them. They play the Giants this week with Christian Watson's injury. Reed and Dobbs would be the two huh. that I'd prefer to play. It's not just the Giants. You get the Giants, you get the Bucks, you get the Panthers, you get the Vikings. Yeah, I mean, that's a great run. And so those two guys to me are tippy-top, near the top of the list. What order do you have them in? Honestly, I, I I probably have Dobbs higher than Reed. I I have Reed higher than Dobbs, and I I don't know what the the change will be with Christian Watson being out. But I don't know J if you know this, but the last like three weeks for for Jaden Reed, four for forty six, four for thirty four, four for sixteen. I don't know if you know this, but the last several weeks for that same player, thirteen fantasy points, seventeen fantasy points, sixteen point nine fantasy points. He's getting touchdowns. He's getting carries. Uh, you know, he had a 46 Wait, you, you rushing. You skipped the 3.6 well, from you, last week. Yes, this last week he had a down week, but the oh. three previous weeks were were really, really good. Um, you Only 47% snaps. You know, when you said four for 46, that was through the air. He had three for 46 on the ground that same game. Sure. So, I, I mean, I, look, they're both, I think, good. I would like to start both players going forward. Uh, most competitive leagues, I think, those guys aren't yeah and we'll just i'll lump him in because he's a green bay packer but the widely available one would be dontavian wicks fifth round rookie uh has flashed a couple big plays here and there and he seems like he'll be the the next man up to play a bunch of snaps if if watson has to miss yeah it's it's tough because they do distribute the ball i mean to a lot of different players on that roster it it seems like Wicks is their downfield guy, and and we saw a lot of uh, deeper targets to Watson. So Wicks is is an interesting name to pay attention to. You mean because he had a yards per catch of thirty point three a couple of weeks ago, and then mm -hmm. seventeen, and then 15, fourteen. Yeah. yeah, I mean he's he's he he doesn't take as much volume to be good for fantasy. Uh, Curtis Samuel going into the buy could be dropped. Pay attention, he's the one that's been involved not just running cardio like terry mclaurin and john dodson hey. and then you can chase the opportunity with noah brown but i do think that this week he's just under 50 percent rostered um one of the reasons why he's still heavily rostered is because people were able to just usher him onto their um their ir they are their ir i mean last week he played but in i had a couple leagues where he was just stashed they play the Jets. It's not a good matchup. He just con He's coming off a goose. So there's a lot of risk associated with him, but he's a good stash for, like, Tennessee down the road. Yeah, he's he's got that double Tennessee matchup through the fantasy playoffs, and we saw him be absolutely dominant before. He's got a great quarterback with Tank Dell out. I think there's an argument to be made that he's the number one pickup of the week. It's just not a good start this week against the Jets. When we're talking – 
my favorite actually available player. It's between Jalen Hyatt and Zay Jones. Jalen Hyatt snap counts have been rising. He makes plays. He had over 100 yards his last game. Rookie wide receiver for the Giants. Yeah, he's a speedster. Um, I have been impressed with every snap he's taken this year. You loved his college tape. Like you, you had him. I think as the wide receiver four before the NFL draft. Um, you raved about him. And what's really sad is every chance he's had on the NFL field, I feel like he's looked fantastic. He he has shown flashes and been really really good. Why he has not kind of earned more i don't understand well, but he's, the, he's the starting chart, to now the depth chart Jay. <laughs> right right yeah. There's a lot of it's heavy tough. hitters ahead of him well i mean it's a it's not always a matter of um like he's played some decent snaps this year but you've had devito and you've had taylor and you've had you know daniel jones's situation to start the year so uh, just throwing it out there um if you need to add somebody doesn't mean you have to play them uh zay jones is Available in our league. Yeah. Zay Jones had five for 78. The The quarterback situation and the matchups are troubling, though. You you have to go in, into Cleveland, maybe with C.J. Beathard. That's not a start I'm excited to make. Then you have to play Baltimore. You know, and so those two weeks, uh, I just worry about adding him, spinning fab, and then not playing him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, if you want someone that won't take any fab and you've got a roster spot to burn – and you're hoping for maybe a late season breakout. Jonathan Mingo is a yeah. name to pay attention to. This was the first um, game that Carolina had with the whole new coaching staff. You know, they they cleared house, and so it was a new scheme. And all of a sudden, you saw Bryce Young actually look a little bit better, throw the ball downfield a little bit more, and target Mingo over Adam Thielen. Ten targets is something to pay attention to. Thirty eight percent of the targets, and I mean that the last month he's gone. From twenty one percent to twenty three, twenty five, and then thirty eight. He's not going to be a thirty eight percent player, but that was, uh, you know, I'd mentioned him last week. Of that's the player I want to watch. Of with with the new coaching change, do they say let's get this rookie? I mean, he was a he was a high second round pick. Mm -hmm. He was picked to be the future of the wide receiver core for this team. So he is. I agree that the against the the Saints. Yeah, I mean. We'll see. That matchup's kind of gone back and forth. But he is a player that, in deeper leagues, I am looking to add. You prefer him to Hyatt? Uh, yeah. I think that makes I, sense. Yeah. Jonathan Mingo plays every snap. That's another thing that is very valuable. I mean, literally at the 97 98% of every game. If he could just stay in bounds and not be jumping towards the out-of-bounds <laughs> area all the time he's – he has a couple of plays that are just wild. One, he's kind of like a baby deer. He just doesn't have full control of his body just that's yet. What it seems like, but a lot of you know, uh, a lot of athleticism in there. So he just springs right to the out of bounds. When I played wide out in flag football, I used to get made fun of because no matter what throw, I jump. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's a lot of players like that where and, part of their like rhythm is jumping to jump for the catch, even when it's like going to hit you in the chest on a run. I would jump, and Mingo loves to jump. That when I'm, he's the kangaroo. Like when I'm again, it's, it's kid flag football. But the thing I say probably more than anything else is only jump if you have to. Only jump if you have to. You lose your power if you leave the ground. Where were you when I was growing up, Mike? <laughs> uh, growing up, he here's um. Uh, Robert Woods, uh, he he's going to be in the same situation as Noah Brown with more opportunity in in Houston. Devontae Parker had nine more targets. There it, there was no Demario Davis. Douglas. Douglas. Who's Demario Davis? Um, Saints linebacker. There it there. is. Yeah, I've <laughs> yeah, done Kyle's that. I've it. done that before. Thank you, Kyle. Odell Beckham, coming off the bye. Yeah, he's he's fifty fifty rostered. Same with Elijah Moore. Both guys will have opportunity if they're out there. I think most people are like smashing Zay Flowers into lineups right now with Mark Andrews gone. Makes sense he had a good week, but Odell Beckham coming off of the bye should be a little bit healthier and has, you know, had some important targets. He he could be very interesting against the Rams team that uh has been tougher against the run. And I'll I'll cape a little bit for Elijah Moore assuming that it is Joe Flacco at quarterback. That's a 
an assumption right now because when he was brought up, the team said that DTR is the starter, Joe Flacco is the backup player, and and DTR was in concussion protocol. So there's a chance that he makes it back to play. But if it's Joe Flacco against the Jags, I mean, I know that he didn't. You know, it was only four catches, but it was 12 targets. You you give me 12 targets. And those four catches turned into 83 yards, so it's it's bigger plays. I think that Elijah Moore is uh, is a, a, an intriguing player, and yeah, you also have Amari Cooper was ruled out with a concussion uh, in that pass game. And if you the trends of this year would be that Amari Cooper will, will miss, so I I think you should keep your eye on him. Anybody else? We have some. Dirt, some nasty drop candidates that pretty, are being thrown out there. Yeah, I think that's a pretty exhaustive list. We've got a couple more names on the website. If you go look at the fantasy football uh, rankings, uh, the waiver wank rankings on fantasyfootballers.com. No, 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 yeah, no. So, uh, fantasy you're gonna need an incog we- window for <laughs> for those. Yeah. Um, oh. Jason, <laughs> Jason. <laughs> The it's, rankings. It started. I think you were trying to say the fantasyfootballers dot com, and then you, you said the fantasy football, football rankings. rankings, but you like bailed out of that. Yeah, and then you fell apart, <laughs> and then you turned into and a an, dirty old man. A, d- a W showed up out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, that I don't want to be a part of those <laughs> rankings. Yeah, you could check out my personal <laughs> <laughs> rankings. No, please. Uh, let, wait, so what, let's talk about drop candidates, and Andy. What yeah, do you think, Jason Moore? What do you think um, about some some guys you want? Names think? coming up: Hollywood Brown. I mean, Hollywood Brown at this point. Oh. I think that that's a if you drop him, you're just you're just dropping a landmine for somebody else. I, I don't think there's you, you're going into a buy, then you play San Francisco. You're not playing him in either of those games, so then you're hoping to play him maybe in, against Chicago on the road when Chicago's good against wideouts. No, I don't. I, I'm dropping Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, I it's tough. He's also dealing with a heel injury himself, so I don't. You literally can't start him this week. You you're not going to start him the next week. I I agree. I think you drop him and let someone else deal with Hollywood. I would be, you know, I I do see a situation where he comes back off the bye. He actually looks good. He's healthy, and then by the time you get to like championship week, is a perfect matchup against the Eagles. There is an outlet for him being relevant at the end of this season, but it's going to take you a couple weeks to get there. And yeah, that path is you, there for all these pickups. Yeah. If you to need, be relevant, if you need, um, you know, if you need a roster spot, I think you can go ahead and drop them. This is that thing that me and Mike were talking about earlier, a couple weeks ago or last week where like, you don't want to paint the whole picture in week six, seven, eight of how you're going to play your roster all the way through the playoffs. Like, even though, like, Jason, you made a trade for Brees Hall and Hollywood Brown that was, I thought, a league winning uh, move. The, at the time, looked great. I, I thought, and so, like. Thank you. I It, it has it has ruined my roster, and <laughs> is, I'm now going from league winner to 31% chance to make the playoffs. So, my point being, if you lock in what you think you're going to be doing with your roster, it can be a detriment. Like, I think everybody thought Hollywood Brown would be a contributor to fantasy playoff teams. It's not been the case. And so, you know, you have to be willing to go and pivot and play a nasty boy sometimes. Whether, I mean, look, I I held my tongue. I'm not a big Elijah Moore fan because the targets aren't worth a lot of fantasy value historically. Doesn't mean that you can't take the shot this week on Elijah Moore or Jalen Hyatt or Beckham or Zay Jones or some of these players where your, your brain's telling you Hollywood's the better play. But then, you know, or your heart is, I'm sorry. Yeah. But then your brain should be telling you, look, this is not the same. If you just change Hollywood Brown's name to somebody else, you wouldn't feel that way. And so I think that that's Should a re- we just start calling him Marquise Brown? Yes. I think we, like, if you didn't until put the up, end of the season. Until he earns. Double yeah. digit fantasy points. Yeah. You're, you're Marquise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brown pants. Marquise Brown pants. Oh. So, it, look, Hollywood Brown's a name. Terry McLaurin. Terry I, McLaurin is a really interesting He's name. a drop. Full drop for me. He it, it sounds so wild to say that, but his schedule coming up. First of all, he's on by like uh, like Marquise, uh, and then the Rams, the Jets, the San Francisco Forty Nine ers. Uh, I I like that he came out and personally said he was just running cardio and is going to be the squeaky wheel and you know yeah, maybe maybe mad. just 
Yeah, he's big mad. Yeah, he <laughs> I, I would be too. They're they're losing games, not moving the offense, and he's not getting targets while being a great player. Um, but man, that's gonna be that's gonna be tough to trust him. I mean, are you, you're not starting him the first week no. after the bye after this goose pre squeaky wheel nine points, five points, six points, seven points. There, this is a full move on to me, and try to find somebody with more upside. Surprise, Mingo. I yeah. like that. I like taking the shot. Jameson Williams. Sure. Yeah, it's I like Jameson Williams. It's not happening for Terry. And like maybe he has a fluky bomb touchdown, but that like that's not good process to hope for that from what we've seen. Yeah, I mean look, I'm not saying these aren't painful drops yeah. and awful to have to even think about. But you gotta be a realist at this stage in the season to give yourself a shot at a fantasy football title. And and the conversation's broader with Terry McLaurin because this is guys, this is year next year will be year six for Terry McLaurin. His fantasy finishes twenty eight, twenty one, twenty five, fourteen. This year he's thirty. And this is a guy with a hundred targets every year. Yeah, who averages over a thousand yards. And I, a year. I I know we all think he's good. Yeah. Um and maybe this will just be the DJ Moore situation where you just find the right mix eventually. Adam Thielen, are you dropping Adam Thielen? Oh no. <laughs> no, no, don't drop me. I'll be so sad. Well, your hip will probably break. <laughs> oh, both of them. Go on. I'm le- I'm giving you space. Oh, I, I didn't know I had the floor. I'm old. I got tired, everybody. He has not been good. This reminds me of uh, Larry Fitzgerald a couple of years ago. <laughs> yes. First five or six weeks was on fire. The targets were there. I mean, he's still playing. A ton of snaps. He's still playing. First, <laughs> first six games before the bye week, he was on pace for 1,400 yards, 11 touchdowns, 167 oh, I don't want to hear the oh, I was I was so angry. After the, I know, right? Because <laughs> after the bye week, the last six games, he's on pace for 691 yards, no touchdowns, still on 133 targets. It seems the gas tank... How does that it, happen? It, I'll tell you one way it happens, if you want to be fair to Adam Thielen, and it's three play callers in four weeks. That's what's happened to this team. I mean, that you went from Frank Reich to his offensive coordinator to Frank Reich to both fired to a new new play caller. So sure. your, your offense is going to be changing. And that that's one of those things where you're just trying to chase the trend right now, and that is not Thielen. Yes. That is Mingo. Like, put that on the line. Would you drop Thielen for Mingo? I think I would. I think I would go more. I, I think this is a team that knows they're obviously playing for the future, and they've got to they've got to get more they, out of Mingo. They need to get Bryce Young and Jonathan Mingo on the same page. Exactly, and, and so it does make sense to me. You guys ready to talk tight ends? Probably not. It's quick. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. All right, we're done. And defenses. No, I mean the tight end position I'm fine with Isaiah Likely. He's, he's probably picked yeah. up. He's probably picked up. Yeah, he he's he's rostered in forty three percent of uh leagues according to the data we have, so he's still out there in enough leagues to to mention his name. He's got a great matchup against the Rams. That's where you attacked him is at the tight end position. Um he he's easily the best pickup this week. Uh, oh, but if he's gone it gets gross. I I don't know, dude. I think that Brevin Jordan against the Jets, where they're what the wide receivers could struggle, they're gonna they're gonna air it out still. Well, and it's another Dal- team. Dalton you, Schultz could just be back. He oh yeah, absolutely. That but we we don't know, and he missed from uh, a hamstring. Am I remembering that right? Mm. I thought it was a hamstring. Like it wasn't a concussion. It's a I'm pretty sure it's a hamstring injury. Uh, go ahead and vet that. But he had four targets, three for sixty four. It is a hamstring. Yeah, so there's, yeah, a, no, there, there is, I, there's a chance that Dalton Schultz misses again. I like the Brevin Jordan pickup. I think it's a good play. The Jets, they shut down wide receivers, but they're actually pretty susceptible at the tight end position. Um, yeah, not the roster. The question I mean, for him is just Dalton. If Dalton Schultz comes agreed. back, yeah, then, yes. So then just Brevin put him Jordan on the roster and wait and see. Poof. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend fab on him because you could just be burning it. And then if you want to dance with the devil in the pale moonlight, <laughs> you've got Gerald Everett and Donald Parham. Mm-hmm. You've got Kate Otten. He's always around, but he just goosed in a game where 
He really shouldn't have played a billion snaps. And then Tucker Craft had six targets. Uh, he's a he's, he's, he's a he, jag, and he looks he looks good uh, for for a, a rookie tight end, and he's playing against the Giants. So, I mean, if you're scraping, uh, the you know food uh, out of the dumpster, <laughs> eat up. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I we, I mean, we have some other names up on the website you can look at. Just don't eat a meal right before you do. Defensive options this week. Who are your favorite? Uh, I like the Texans. Um, obviously, if if it does come out that Zach Wilson is the quarterback, I like the Texans a little less. That um, really, what? I like them just as much. Yeah, really? they're just yeah. as much. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. Zach yeah. Wilson was your like number one target every week. Yeah, yeah, but they've gotten even. I mean, they've literally gotten worse and yeah. more turnover prone. But they're a- still they two re- tires are out. They will return to bad. I, I love that matchup. I would rather play uh, – if it's Zach Wilson at quarterback for the Jets, then I would rather play against Danny DeVito and, and get the Packers. Dude, Danny DeVito's balling out the last two weeks. Yeah, I don't agree with that one. Let's, have a, let's have a I mean, Packers I don't think, I like it's, both. A, I don't think it's a DST. huge debate. Like I, I'm, I'm good with both of those matchups. I mean, but here's I the points that the Zach Jets. Wilson put up before he was benched. 6-12, 6-12. That, yeah, but Devito was much better than that. No, yes, but I'm talking about things that well, like the the DST scoring. Yes, the DST scoring, the 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 sacks, the two interceptions. fumbles, three fumbles, one fumble. Is that Wilson? Yeah, I mean they both they're both good matchups. Maybe we can just leave it there. Yeah. Yep. Green Bay, that's that matchup against the Giants. Houston against the Jets. Green Bay's defense has been on more of a streak. They're better than Houston's, so I understand that argument. New Orleans. The the Saints have a they they play the Giants in the first round of the playoffs and they play Carolina this week. this week so and the Saints are a really good defense that is like a yay win 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 pick up the Saints maybe they're the best pickup of the week my only concern here is that is like there's there's no one that hurts your defense more than Jameis Winston if he's <laughs> your quarterback on offense you know what I mean like, yeah. He, he can he can turn the Saints defense bad. I think that one of the best defenses of the week is going to end up being the Detroit Lions. Sure. Because against Chicago. Justin Fields is going to make his customary mistakes. He's going to take a bunch of sacks, hold the ball too long, um, tip passes, fumbles. I mean, he you name it. This guy's got the he's got it. He's got what it takes to give your defense fantasy points. Yeah, and if if most all these defenses are taken and you're looking for someone more widely available, the Raiders' defense has been playing better of late. They're playing against the Minnesota Vikings, who, as of right now, we don't even know who their quarterback is, but we know it is a problem. So, Jason, if they wanted to see more defenses, what would they check on the website? Well, they're going to check our rankings on the fantasyfootballers.com. Those rankings are... Up there. Up there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Full stream ahead. Talk about being on a heater. Jason sent some people off the freeway yesterday with his trachea attack. <laughs> <laughs> and then today we've Throat got chop. we've got a uh, rankings. Um, a rankings. <laughs> All right. Full stream ahead. I thought about Jake Browning. I don't have the guts. I, I'm worried about Ooh. the ping pong situation. So I'm going to go Russell Wilson as my streaming quarterback. Top 12 in three or four weeks. Here's what I like. I like that he's playing the Los Angeles Chargers, who are 28th against quarterbacks. And I like the fact that this new Denver offense, now it didn't work very often. It worked one time with Cortland Sutton. But it's play action deep passes. He had Marvin Mims for a touchdown. He had a couple other guys that he just missed under throwing them but they do the play action Seattle Russell Wilson go deep situation. I like it. I think the Chargers are a good matchup. Sure. I feel safer than dancing with like like your oh, okay. All right. Your two picks yeah. are, are the exact same player in my mind, which yeah. is which is uh in the same matchup. The games like a couple weeks ago I passed on Gardner Minshew as a stream because he is just a wild man mm-hmm. and he can finish twenty seventh at the position or he can finish third. Something he just did in a four-game span. So, Jason, you have... I've got Gardner Minshew. Um, Gardner Minshew, 
looked okay last week, threw the ball 41 times, 42 times, um, and now is playing against Cincinnati. Thankfully, Jake Browning looks like he might be able to score on the Colts, as most everyone can do. The Colts are really impressive to me right now because they give up so many points. I mean, they just they just get scored on nonstop, and they are winning games. Uh, the, their record is good with a bunch of backups, and so if if they're giving up points to to the Bengals, they're going to need to throw. And the Bengals defense hasn't looked great. I mean, we just saw sixty points last night in the Bengals game. So I think you could start Gardner Minshew this week. Yep. And for this one, though. Steel underpants. You got to visit the Smith. It is Jake Browning on the other side of the ball, 32 of 37 for over 350 yards. The argument for Browning, I mean, number one, is he looked he looked competent. Uh, not just competent. He looked good against a team that uh, I believe if the Jags had won, they would have been the number one seed in the yes, AFC. Correct. So their night went poorly between oh, yes. uh Kirk, Lawrence, and losing. But the point being, you looked good against that team. You can look good against the Colts. Colts games are averaging almost fifty points combined per game. They're the twenty fourth ranked defense and schedule adjusted points to the quarterback position. And he and T. Higgins is back. I agree with Andy. It's it's a big deal. Even if T. Higgins doesn't come through with a big performance himself. The fact that he is now he has his weapons, I think that that he can make it happen. He's widely available. My uh, my son was in raid almost rage cheers last night as he had already lost Joe Burrow and his backup quarterback in his league was Trevor Lawrence and he's just like, what is happening? And we looked at the quarterback waiver wire and there's on there is Jake Browning and to me of the guys that were in his league. It was the best chance at getting an actual ceiling game. I think he can hit it. I'm not expecting 350 and multiple touchdowns, but just give me 250 and two. You want to be a part of the Indianapolis game every week. Those are fun. I will also say, you know, someone like Brock Purdy, who's been dominant, he's at 9.6 in attempt on the year. Jake Browning's at 9.2 over the last two starts, and right. he's completing 81% of his passes in the last two games combined. So, look, I, the case is there. The terror is there, but here we are. I mean, are we at the point now where next year we're going to tell people to draft two quarterbacks in a one-quarterback league the way that <laughs> they're dropping like flies? It's I mean, this crazy. is – It's been unfun. <laughs> it's really been unfun. Now, if if for some reason Jordan Love is not rostered, right. you would take him above all three of these? 100%, yes. Okay. yes. And he is available in about 35% of leagues, so uh, obviously if he's there and Jake Browning's there – I don't. You, yeah, you, okay, know who to, you know who to go with. All right, you can see all of our waiver wire rankings yeah. on <laughs> rankings. thefantasyfootballers.com. And tomorrow we'll cover Hungry for More, the Thursday night preview, some mailbag, and a whole lot more. Starts of the week, later in the week. The uh, Hitman's Wheel of Shame coming up as well. Freaking Terry McLaurin. No, I no. Sam Howe. I don't blame Terry. Sam will, Howe's been great. I will How never, dare I will never you. blame Terry. That is going to do it for today's show. Check us out on youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Take Goodbye. care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF ballers.